checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. We watched WWF Wrestling Challenge Season 2, Episode 4, January 24th, 1987. These shows are so much better now that like Mania season has actually begun. Oh yeah, there's like a there's like a direction. Yes. It's not just building up matches for house shows we're not gonna see. Yes. We've got a direction for WrestleMania 3. So the show comes up, there is an empty ring and thunderous booing. Strange way to start a program. You know, we talked about this last week, but I gotta say, you know, the more I think about it, the more impressed I am with WrestleMania 3. Because, you know, 78,000 with like a month and a half, they have still not announced. It's the end of January, the show that we watched. They have not announced a building. No. We only know a date. Not even a city. No. It's like, it's less than two months away. So at some point in the next eight weeks, they announce WrestleMania 3 and sell 78,000 tickets in like six, seven weeks. And, and think about this. A lot of the WrestleMania crowd now is fly-ins. At that point... In that time, of, in that time, it was impossible to get a flight within a, just a few weeks. Well, if I, you want to do that, I, even even taking that out, okay. So everyone does fly in, but you know what? They ain't selling seventy eight thousand tickets to this year's like legitimately seventy eight thousand. Oh, right. They are not selling seventy eight thousand to this year's WrestleMania, and tickets are on sale for like a year right. prior to the next WrestleMania. You know, we're still at you know forty thousand for all in which was announced in December. Tickets were put on sale in December. So the more I think about it, the more that WrestleMania 3 crowd may be one of the most impressive wrestling crowds of all time. Just how many they sold in such a short period of time. So we open with an empty ring and thunderous booing, and then Gorilla tells us, take the phone off the hook, here comes the action. And the action this week includes the Junkyard Dog, the challenge debut of Demolition, Kamala, Jacques Rougeau versus Magnificent Morocco, and what a barber that was. And the return of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Our opener, Al Navarro versus Junkyard Dog. Bobby Heenan promises, coming up real, real quick, the most important thing I know of in professional wrestling. But I won't tell you right now. Then why did you even bring it up? Gorilla asks. Well, he, yeah, and then Gorilla, actually, first Gorilla blew him off. He laughs at him. Yeah. And, you know, this is this is now, um, it's, it's like a trend on this show. Bobby Heenan is the heel, but at least twice now, he has said something that Gorilla has completely scoffed at him over, and Gorilla has been wrong. Yeah. Remember when, when Bobby brought up that Lou Albano was retiring, and Gorilla completely buried him? Then <laughs> they come back from Russia, right? Hey, you know, he might be retiring. And now it's this one. Bobby says something monumental is about to happen on this show. Gorilla doubts him. He's wrong again. Brain won that uh, steak dinner one week, too. Yeah. So the story of this match is Danny Davis is being a horrible ref. In a squash match. In a squash match. Uh, the king, Harley Race, declares Junkyard Dog is nothing special. He will bow to the king. And that of Highly course, unlikely, says Gorilla. That, of course, is a Mania 3 match. And eventually, JYD wins the match with a power slam, but he's so irritated with Danny Davis, he offers them a free shot at the chin. You know, but just hit me one time so I can hit you back. And Davis, of course, won't do it, so Junkyard Dog just leaves, leaves him and dances with a little kid. Yeah, by my math, that little kid's about 42 years old today. Hmm. I wish you had not said that. <laughs> yeah. We're fucking old. So I, I don't want to be crass, but I was watching this match, and I was quite sure what I was seeing... And then I was definitely sure what I was seeing when he was dancing with the kid, but um, GYD pooped his pants Great. at one point. So, FYI. <laughs> Been known to happen. Um, FYI. Yeah. Craig, any thoughts? I would uh, say not, TMI. I, <laughs> I, you know, I had something to say, and I, I completely lost. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, mm. nothing. I got nothing. The wrestler's rebuttal is still going on for some reason. The reason is obvious. They're trying to sell these stupid magazines. Gorilla tells us Adrian Adonis is hot about the magazine. Piper's on the cover. Adrian don't like it. They spray it with perfume. That's it. And it was last month's cover because Savage is on this month's cover. Just saying. Jerry Allen and C.V. Offy versus Demolition. So this is a it, an unfinished product. I'll say. Demolition. Come on here. It is Axe, as we know as Axe, and of course... 
Uh, whichever Moondog. Moondog Spot. This was Moondog Rex. Moondog Rex. It was Randy Colley. Randy Colley. Uh, and he and Axe, like, invented this gimmick. They came up with it on their own. Mm-hmm. They did literally two television matches, this one and one other. And then I guess they figured, well, everyone's going to know this fucking guy is Rex. Yeah. And so they got rid of him. They brought in old Crusher Khrushchev to replace him. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, Kali was probably bitter from then on out that he helped invent a gimmick that then went to somebody else pretty much immediately. Yeah. And he was stuck being a moon dog. No music yet. No music. Which was devastating to me (laughs) because it's literally maybe the best feud that has ever been written in pro wrestling. Best theme. The best theme. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I don't think that's out until... I guess Pilot Ever came out at the end of 87. Yeah. So it's a long time before we get the demolition music. They had the same entrance gear, which is awesome. I mean, everyone's got leather and spikes, but those masks ruled. Mm-hmm. And then they reveal their faces, which the face paint design had not yet been finalized. It all say. They had, like, when they got, when they became demolition, it was all, like, silver and black and red and spiky. Yeah. This is just random blotchy colors. Yeah. I think Smash had a slice of pizza on his face. And then they're doing this match, and the announcers say, uh, let's take a look at this face paint. And so they do a a picture-in-picture, and it's a picture of both of their faces so you can see the paint. And I was like, they just showed us a photograph. And then they show it for like 10 seconds, Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you see Axe move. Yeah, It's like, no, it wasn't a freeze frame. They were just standing there unmoving for 10 seconds. That was their inset promo. Yes. And then, yes. And then it just went away. Yes, yes. And it's not just the face paint. They also put color in their hair. And one of them, I'm sure it was supposed to be red, but it was pink. Let's be honest. And they had fuzzy boots. Yeah. So so a work in progress here. Now, here's the thing. They did uh, zero teases. For, and think, think of the... I, I've seen 200 Outback Jack teases already. A bunch of Black Jack Mulligan promos. Demolin just walks out, two large men in yeah, leather. With no music. Immediately. Immediately the fans are chanting boring. They do the squash. Uh, there was a fucked up sunset flip. The story I'd always heard was that they uh, recognized this moon dog. The fans did, and so they, they took him out of the team. And uh, watched that. I watched that sunset flip. I thought, you know, maybe this wasn't that good. <laughs> he did not look good in this match at all. No, mm-hmm. no. And uh, they won with the decapitation. And uh, this did not get over on night one. I can confirm that. Ken Resnick had the weirdest interview ever with the U.S. Express. Man, this thing was so weird because he goes, Mike Rotunda, the end of 1986 wasn't a really good year for the U.S. Express. And there's a long pause and Rotunda goes, why do you say that? And so Resnick says, well, Danny's knee injury. And there's a long pause and Rotunda's like, well, you know, that's a positive. It got him off his ass. <laughs> Gave him incentive to return from his injury. And I'm like, is he turning heel? These are not his exact words, but the message is No, that, those were actually... Ex- he didn't say like ass. He said rear end. He said butt. But, yeah. He goes, it got him off his butt and yeah. gave him an incentive to come back from injury. Yeah, but yes. I was like, is he turning on him? He, this is a total heel promo. He was a total asshole. By Mike Rotundo of the U.S. Express. Then they go to interview Danny. He, well, actually, I should add, uh, uh, Rotundo closes by saying, Danny is this much more mature than he was last year. So am I. So is everyone out there. Our goal is to win a match in every city in the United States. Mm-hmm. By my research, that's approximately 109,000 towns and cities. That's a lot of wins. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think they... For historical record, they didn't do that. No, no. Just so y'all know. So then he goes to interview Dan Spivey, and Rotundo had done a heel promo, and now Spivey's doing a heel promo. Well, he did a heel promo on himself. Basically. He's like, Rotunda's right. I got off my ass. Well, he says, all these people are trying to hurt me. I'm going to hurt them back. I got a bad attitude now. I'm like... I don't know how long these guys were around, but were they teasing a heel turn by the U.S. Express? Well, they, it was weird because it seemed like Rotunda was turning heel on uh, Spivey. Spivey, but then Spivey is like turning heel on everybody. It was weird. This was weird. And then Resnick is frantically trying to wrap it up and just end these things, and Rotunda's dad's, you know, I'm happy 1986 is over, too. <laughs> The um, Rotundo's logic in this uh, interview where he says that uh, a year has passed and therefore he's more mature and is going to use that maturity to his advantage against his opponents. 
Um, meanwhile, his opponents have also matured the same year, so therefore they would have the same advantage. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> and also that that line of the 1986, like Resnick was done, they were showing like the like they were off them. The music has ramped up and very lightly in the background. You said, "I'm glad 1986 is over." It was crazy. Rotunda was not good here. <laughs> That's he was never a good. Player. Of all the words I would use, "good" is not on the list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.